culture these days is shaped by sloganeering. And one slogan that's been a favorite on both sides of the political aisle the past few years has been diversity is our strength. Ah, yes, the fortifying power of colorfulness. That's what makes us strong. It's why I've always put Fruit Loops in my post-workout shakes instead of whey protein. But like most mantras, the power of this phrase doesn't come from its actual content, but from the hypnotic effect of repeating it so many times. You're not supposed to think about what the phrase means. You're just supposed to repeat it, take the mandatory training, and wear the ribbon. Everyone wears the ribbon. You must wear the ribbon. Still, it's worth weighing what's actually being said. Is it even true? Lots of well-meaning Christians might think they can affirm some version of this sentiment. The body of Christ, after all, is composed of many different members. If every person in the church was wired to think and act the same, we would get nowhere. See 1 Corinthians 12. And we know that we're heading to the finish line of history where every nation and tribe and tongue bows down to King Jesus. See Philippians chapter 2 and Revelation 5. But to assume that our ruling class has such sweet, bible thoughts in mind when this mantra is on their lips is dangerously naive. See, to them, diversity means something else. It's not about gathering a diversity of backgrounds, experiences, skills, and ideas to combine our wisdom and sharpen one another. No, their definition of diversity is skin deep, like a case of Chris Matthews' goosebumps. My, I felt this thrill going up my leg. I mean, well, I don't have that too often. In fact, for the left, the one thing you can't have is diversity of opinion. Just ask J.K. Rowling or Brittany Mahomes. What's more, their version of diversity isn't just about race, but also all 68 so-called gender expressions. After all, gotta catch them all. That's the problem with words like diversity. But what about the rest of the phrase, our strength? Who's the our, anyway? For today's progressives, that us is completely open-ended. It's tied to this false idea of America as a propositional nation. You don't have to appreciate our religion, our history, our heritage, or our culture. You just have to cross the border, agree that everyone is equal somehow, and voila, you're an American now. Well, in this model, yes, 10 million plus migrants from every corner of the earth really is our strength. Because the our isn't a nation rooted in shared history, culture, or faith. It's a system where elites can keep disunified factions at bay through, well, slogans. So here's my crazy alternative. What if unity was our strength? After all, when Jesus prayed for the church in John 17, he didn't just pray for its diversity. He prayed for its unity, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, John 17, 21. Or take Paul when he's encouraging the Corinthian church to be unified despite having different gifts. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slave or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. King David also saw unity as a strength. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity, Psalm 133, verse 1. See, when you go overseas on a missions trip, which, by the way, you can and maybe even should, just go to abwe.org slash trips, When you go on a missions trip, you'll be amazed, yes, by the sheer differentness of foreign languages and cultures, but what will really amaze you will be the unity with other Christians. They might not look like you or sound like you, their food might gross you out, and their music might bore you, but you'll find yourself startlingly unified with them, more unified than you feel with your next door neighbor who might look just like you, but hates everything you believe in. See, only the Christian can truly experience this kind of diversity that's rooted in real unity. So rest easy. You don't have to repeat the mindless mantra. And you don't even have to wear the ribbon. Hey you, come back here! Come back here and put this on! Thanks for watching. We produce this show not only to model a biblical worldview, but to move you out into the world. Be a part of God's mission. Find your role in advancing the gospel at abwe.org.